<laughs> Hello, my setters. Hi there, hi there, hi there, hi there. Welcome to Wednesday Life Sciences with Lily and Llewellyn. Hello. Hi there. All right, yourself? <laughs> I'm good. Llewellyn's actually making fun of me. That's why I'm laughing because he says I have, I bought a, what? A half pair. Half pair of denim. They cut <laughs> everywhere. She needs yeah. to buy a Because my jeans are torn. Now he doesn't know. You see, he doesn't understand fashion. This guy. Anyway, what are we doing for the great lives today? We're doing flowers and reproduction. Huh? All right. That's cool. I so, think so. so great levels, I hope you guys are excited and you're ready to learn more <coughs> and learn extra with all of us. Just remember to download your show notes on learn.mindset.co.za and remember hit us up on Facebook and on Twitter at Learn Extra. Remember, if you want to win yourself a 110 run Vodacom airtime, do submit your entries for the Test Yourself competition. So all you need to do is answer the questions. Can you just show them? Y yeah, but it's, you it's, can. it's actually like right at the end. Oh, okay, okay, never but mind. What I do want to say is I, I had a look at some of these results that we're getting in. Yeah. Now, me, okay. I thought, because I, I think I'm special, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought I have like millions of people. Yeah. Now, what do you think, Luni? I reckon there's lots of you out there, or right? Yeah. But there was only like 10 people that answered. Mm. So I think that you need to go for it, right? And remember that this will help you in your test when it gets to school, first of all. And second of all, the better you do in your test at school, right? the more chance you have to go to university. They take, take your grade 11, your, your grade, grade 11, 11. Re report. So yeah. come guys, this will help you. I'm trying to give you as much as possible. So if I'm gonna do the work, come on, give, give me the satisfaction of seeing you guys do this. Yes. Right, so not only can you win the airtime, but it helps you with the schoolwork. So come on, let's do it. Yes. Remember, guys, entries do close at 10 p.m. tonight. So if you want to watch <coughs> the show first and you get done with that and then you're like, okay, now I have time, test yourself, everything, you just, you know, and then 10 p.m. entries close, then tomorrow I will tell you who the winner is because I'll be here tomorrow as well. I'll tell you who the winner is from last night's show when we go to a break, but now we're going to flowers and <laughs> everything. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I love it. <laughs> right. Come, guys. Please don't let me down. I really want to see you guys give it, huh? Everything you got. Come put it in there. Right. So, <coughs> straight back to work. Flowers, okay? What are they used for? Okay? That is what we're doing today. I'm going to use pink for beauty. Right. So, we're going to have a look at the flowers and the reproduction structure of the flowers. Okay. So, before we start, right, we're gonna t I'm going to tell you about what the lesson consists of give you the challenge question, then I'm going to go give you some nice things. First of all, we're going to have a look at the structure of a flower. Okay, we need to know the structure of it first. Then we're going to have a look how the adaption for pollination, so how it adapt adapted for pollination. And lastly, we're going to discuss the significance of seeds. That's what we're going to do. Right. Now, challenge question. Let's go. It says, describe, in other words, you've got to explain it make me understand it, right? Describe what happens from the moment that right <coughs> pollen, remember, right po pollen lands on a subsistence. Oh, you see. Now the, let me put this in. Sometimes my mouth doesn't work for some reason. Hey, Looney? It's the English. It's the English. It rhymes. <laughs> on a ripe female, <laughs> so let me put it into simpler English for us, right? On a rough stig stigma of a flower, right? And fertilization has been completed. So that is the whole, that is the question, right? You need to describe it to me and how it works, right? That is what I want from you. Now, I've got some things as always, right? Because it's Valentine's, right? Oh. It's not Valentine's Day, but the month of it, we need to go have a look at some flowers, right? So if you follow me, okay? It's very simple. I'm going to go from things that we've seen before and things we haven't. Now, can you remember we did this thing called um, cone-bearing plants, right? And when it came to pollination, you heard that thing called winged pollination. <coughs> and I normally said, you got your, your pine, which is your needles and all of that. Can you remember those trees, right? And they use wind pollination, so they'll have a lot of anthers, and they would let the, the pollen fall down and land on the stigma of the female, right? Now, what I've done is I've brought <coughs> one just like that. So that is classified almost as a flower, okay? Have a good look. It's beautiful colors, isn't it? Hey, Looney, what do you think? Is it beautiful colors? It's just green. It's just green. And you see how her voice is, oh, it's <laughs> just green, right? This plant doesn't need colors, okay? What it needs is this. 
right? It needs that. And the pollen's falling, yeah? It needs that. And so that this pollen can actually go to the females, right? This pollen is going to be light and it's going to be smooth so that it can flow with the wind. And have you noticed how they stick out nicely? They stick out very nicely, okay? So that the wind can blow them nice and easily. Right. Now, that's the first one I wanted to show you. Then, <coughs> I want to talk about different flowers and what they look like and how they look and things like that. And you've all seen flowers. You've seen the roses and stuff like, like that. But the most important thing for flowers, right, I'm sure you know, is pollination. Now, pollination has got to do with taking pollen from one plant to, to the other, right? Now, how's it going to do that? It needs something to pollinize or, or something. It's going to use something to take the pollen from one plant to the other, right? So let's say, for example, we've got birds. Now, birds have got long beaks, right? So the flower is going to be adapted to take this long beak. So I'm going to take out something nice and small, and it's already closed because I've had it in my bag all day, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it off here. Okay, there it is. Okay, there it is. And you see how nice and long it actually is. Okay, now this closes because it doesn't need to open at the moment because there's no sunlight, and there's, if there's no sunlight, it means that there's no insects or anything or birds or anything out there. Right? So that'll open like that. Can you see it? Okay, it opens up nicely. It's got a nice long part here so that the bird can stick its beak inside and actually go and get the nectar at the bottom. Okay, so this thing gives off nectar so that it, the, the bird can gain something. And then, of course, it's going to make the pollen stick onto its, its beak. And th this means that that pollen's going to be very sticky. Right, so that's the one. <coughs> I'm going to make it go a little bit bigger. Right, because I like getting big, well, no, I'm going to go a bit smaller first. There it is, okay? A little bit smaller, same type of thing. You'll notice, same long tube down the bottom, right? This long tube, make sure that we have a certain type of animal that goes through pollination. <coughs> right, can you see it carefully? Okay, and inside, if you could look in carefully, you will see the stigma and the style and everything. Right, so these are like a bird pollination. But don't, don't stress if you can't see it now, because I'm going to get bigger. That's how it works. Right. Then I've got this one. Same thing. It's a beautiful flower, actually. Right? It looks like, like that. And when it's open, okay, let's first get it close again so that you can see it nicely. There it is. And if I open it, that's what it looks like. Can you see? And inside... If you look very closely, you see the stigma and the style again. Right. <coughs> nice. I'm glad you can see that. I like that. And then, of course, you get this. This is a flower. Beautiful flower, huh? Can you see? I don't know if you can. Just have a good look. Right on the tip here. Right on the tip there. There's the female part sticking out. Can you see it? Just as lone thing again right by itself you see there there it is i'm moving it okay that's the part that's a female but this is a beautiful flower hey so how is the insect going to get there well <coughs> the nice thing about this flower is it gets nice and big and it opens up hey so if i walked up to looney and i said to her looney which one would you like this one or would you like this one i want that one you want this one yes. and this one and this one is exactly the same flower Oh. This is, hasn't opened yet. This one has. And remember, I showed you this little piece here again. Look how it sticks out here. See it? That's the female part. Okay? Now, what I want to do is I actually, I actually want to take off the petals. Right. So if you have a look one more time, there's the female part. You see I've moved it. Okay. Now, the male parts, look inside. There are the male parts. They're a little bit lower. Can you see them? Right? Over there again. That's where they are. Now, let's have a closer look. I'm going to take these petals off. I like taking <coughs> petals off because I want to show you. But I've got to be very gentle because the minute I take a petal off, look here. I've got a male part coming out. Can you see that male part? And on top of this part here, can you see I've moved it? That's where the male gametes are going to be found. Right. Okay, so let's see if I can move this a little bit more. 
gently. You know, sometimes me as a man, I rush things. And rushing things is never good. Am I right, Looney? Yes. You learn more when you relax and calm down. Ah, there we go. Look at that. There we go. Deflowering is, is very important to take your time. Now, if you have a look, there's the female part. I'm going to take it and move it across. Can you see it? I'm holding the female part. Okay. Look how much longer, I'm going to let it go, it is to the males. There's the female. There's the males. Okay. It's actually quite nice. It's a lovely way of looking at it. Okay. So this is a nice flower. And this would be done by insects roundabout. Because remember, it's got that long part in it. Right. So move that aside. I like moving things aside. Now. That is what you're going to call things that's going to have happen with birds. Right. Now, if I want to have a look at things that come from bugs, you know, insects and that. Okay. Let's start with that. So, I'm going to go small. <laughs> I thought I'd start off small. That's quite nice. Right. So, small, I'm going to open it because these flowers, once it gets dark and there's no, I'm trying to open it for you so you can see, so don't worry. There's no insects around. They're closed to protect themselves. So have a look. The things I was brushing past are your petals, right? And that part in the middle that's yellow, can you see that? That there is very important because that is the male part of the plant. And the females are going to be inside there as well. So can you see how nice it looks? Right. Um, I don't think you can. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this aside. Right. So let's go a little bit bigger. Same thing. <coughs> Not the same flower, but round about the same flower. There's the petals, right? There's the petals. And there's, in the middle, is the male and female parts. Can you see them? It's very easy to see. See it? Nah, still can't see it. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Looney, we're just getting bigger and bigger, girl. Yes. Right? I made sure I got this so you could see it. <coughs> right. Nice and gentle. Let's open it up again. Petals. Can you see them? Okay. Now have a look at the male and female parts. Can you see it? Okay. That is so gorgeous. That's actually very nice. You can see very, very close inside there. It's nice and big. Okay. Now we've had a look at the male and female parts on the inside there. But have a good look at this beautiful yellow color, right? This beautiful yellow color is very, very important. You do know that this here is a modified leaf, okay? And with that modified leaf, all its, there, uh, all its job is is to say, come, that's all it is. It looks beautiful, it looks colorful, so we're gonna attract things, okay? The next thing is, inside they produce nectar, and that nectar is sweet, and if something sweet, it brings in the bees, for instance, right? That's why your cold drinks always end up with bees in them. Be careful with that, okay? So if I took off all the petals, right? There we go. Look at the sepal. Can you see it? Look at the sepal here. Okay, what is the job of that? I'm going to show you in a few seconds. Okay, see how I pulled off all the things? Now we've made it aside. Let's move on. Next one I want to show you. <coughs> What happens if you have a bunch of flowers together? Look at that. All little flowers. There it is. One little flower. And if you notice how they're nice and open, this flower is for insects. Okay, same with this one. Same with the one I had here. The insects can land on you. Same with this one. Just insects land on it. Right, I just, I just thought I'd bring something nice and pretty to show you. Right, then <coughs> I've got the next thing. We're going to start off with this. Okay, and I'm going to strip it. Now, please, you must, must be special because there's thorns on this thing. And, of course, I will pick the ones with thorns to show you. Now, if you have a good look, this is just green, right? And you can see these funny things that's protecting it, like a raincoat, right? It's the same as what I brought you. It's this little green part here. You see them? That's what's covering here. It's for protection. And what happens is, after a while, when these things... When these, it's time to start calling in those insects, what happens is those little green things open up. Okay, you see how they open up? There it is. Let me just take these leaves off so you can see nicely, and I can hold it with the thorns. See how they open up? And the petals are still nice and close, close together. The reason for that is it, the male and female part of the plant is not 
ready for, for uh, fertilization and re reproduction yet. So it's protecting it inside. Right, because that's all this stuff is for, protection and to attract. Then, of course, I, I want you to have a good look. Look how small this is here. See how small that part is? Okay. What happens is, then you get the stuff that you give to Looney. We give to Looney. Hey, Looney. What? It's a little rose. So nice. So nice. Uh -huh. So it's a little rose. Okay. All the petals are open. You see the, the green parts are folded away because they're not going to be used anymore. Right? And look inside. Look at that. All the male and female plants are inside. Okay, that is very important. Now, if you look very close, try and see if you can get in nice and close. Look at the petals on the inside. Look what is on top of them. Can you see the pollen grains? Look very carefully. It's like little, like little dusts of yellow. Can you see it? Little dusts of yellow that's there. That's the pollen grains. And now, when this whole thing has been fertilized, what does it end up doing? What actually happens? Well, it starts doing this. You know that game? I don't know if you know that game, Looney. What game? It goes, he loves me. Oh, he, he loves, loves me not. Yes. He loves me. You know that game? Yes. Right. So what happens is all these petals fall off. Right? And we get all the petals. All the petals fall off. And that's what it looks like. Right at the end, with these things sticking out. But now they don't need that anymore, do they? Right? They don't need that part. They need the ovaries because that's where the pollen or the male gamete has gone all the way down to the bottom to the female gamete. So what does it look like after that? That is what it looks like. Look at the difference. Can you see it? Look at the difference between the two. Okay? Both of them look the same they've both got that okay this part is still there it's missing okay and if i have a look if i pull this up if i can try look at the difference in the thickness of the two you see it now in here this one is not matured it was still going to go get fertilized this one's matured, all of that's fallen out. You can see it's died off. And inside here is where you will find the seeds. Now that is the whole thing that I've got for you. And hopefully that helps you. Right. So after looking at all these pretty little flowers and, uh, and showing Luna, and Luna's going crazy there in the back. Right. She, lo she wants all the flowers. She's moaning because I'm destroying them. I right. I think we need a break so I can like calm her down. Huh? What do you think, Lily? Okay. Anyways. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're talking about. But anyway. <laughs> she acts well. <laughs> yeah, no, me. Good actress. But anyway, my sisters, we are going to take a break. Congratulations to Mutao Arihone. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. You have won yourself 110 on eight time from last night. Taste yourself competition. <laughs> Congratulations to you. So we are going to take a break, guys. We'll see you straight after this. Welcome back, Mindsetters, as you can see. <laughs> I've got this pretty thing here, but I'll tell you about it now. now. Quick shout-outs to Bongi, Wemuko, Vetando, Mbali, hmm, Jabulile, Charlotte, Lita Botiketo, Tuto Sanele, Shafa Kanyisi, Lesalbi, Ndutu Gondamu, Lelo, Tabete, Bradley, Sharon. And then Sharon also says she wants to say hi to Mo... Mm -hmm. To Shy, Bridget, and Muyagi, or something like that. Tulisile, Apiwe, Bongani, Bongiwe, Sizwe. Sizwe also wants to say hi to Nompi Lombata. And yes, that's all. You can't tell me that you can't put all of you on that question uh, list. Yes, you <laughs> know, you guys want to have shout outs, but you don't answer the test as well. So now I'm taking over the lesson. So I've been told to tell you what this is. So this is a flower, obviously, and then these are the female parts of the flower. These are the male parts of the flower, and these are the petals. Lesson over. <laughs> <laughs> that is impressive. <laughs> but now, if you go look at that flower again while I'm talking, right? 
Looney, have you noticed that the female's right in the middle and all yes. the men are around it? Haven't you yes. noticed that's like us? One woman in the middle and all the men around it. But there's not one woman, there's one, two, yeah, three, but there's four. A, when have you seen a woman by herself that always hang up in groups? <laughs> hey, can you yeah, it's true, true hey? Yeah, all the men true. around, the woman in the middle. Yes. That's how we protect it. Well, yes. let's have a look. Here it is. Nice and easy. Let's have a look at some questions. Right. So, if I bring this down, let's have a look at the first one. Some yellow going there. It says, name the parts. A to C. Okay, so let's get to, let me get to, to what's name? Let's see A, oh jeez, A, B, and C. There they are. So A is pointing to this part, B is pointing to that part, and C is pointing, well, it should be going all the way to that part. Now, I'm lying. C is definitely, let me raise there, C is definitely pointing to the right spot. Right? If we have a look at it, A is the top, okay? It's the, yo, come on. It's the stigma, the style, and the sepal. Let's see. Stigma is the top part of the female, right? The style, there it is, the top part. The style is this, like, long tube, right? And remember I said to you, you've got those green things on the outside of the flower. Remember it was closed in the beginning and then they opened up and they ended off right at the bottom, right? One of those things are called the sepal. Nice, easy, and it's, you guys can do this quite easily. Right, so that was the first question. If I have a look at the next one, where is, okay? That's the first thing you gotta look at, where is? So it's gonna ask you for a specific place, okay? So where is the male gametes and, because it's one question, oh, it's, it's two questions in one, and the female gametes found in flowering plants. Okay, let's see. Flowering plants, where are the males found? Where are the females found? Now, please understand, it says gametes. Okay, there's the word that's going to confuse you. Gametes. Because if I had a look at it, right, and I didn't read it properly. I would have said the males are found on the outside, while outside before the petals, and the females are found in the middle. Am I right? That's what you would think. They didn't ask for the andresium, the gynesium. They asked for the male part and the female part. Okay. Now the male part. If I had to look at this piece here, the male part. Oh, come on. The male part looks like that. And on top of these, right, these little, little yellow, little yellow, I want to just make sure that you see it again. There it is, that part, right? If I have a look at those little yellow parts, those are called pollen grains, right? And inside the pollen grain is where you find the male gametes. So let's have a look at it. The male gametes are found on the anther, right, in the pollen grains. Do you understand? The female part of the plant, right, the female gametes, is not found here on this pistil, right? It's not found in there. The female part is found here in the ovary, okay? Female part is found in the ovary, not in this whole piece. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Right, so let's see the answer of this. Here it is. The anther is found on the, uh, uh, the male gametes are found on the anther. So, like I said, on the anther, inside the pollen grain. Okay, adding a little bit more in there for you. Okay, the next thing, the female part is found in the ovary. Easy, simple. Okay, now, let's have a look at the next one says, are these structures haploid or diploid? Now, that is, a, that is, that is a, uh, quite a cool question because this structure, anther and ovary, are they haploid or diploid? Now, what is the difference between that? Remember, every cell in the body, right, and in the plant, is a diploid cell. The only cell that is a haploid is your gametes. Okay, now think about the question carefully. They said, where are the gametes found? 
Where the male gametes found? Where are the female gametes found? And you said antha and ovary. Next question is, are these structures haploid or diploid? So they're looking at the structures. They're not looking at the gametes. And of course, they are diploid. They make haploid cells, but they are physically diploid. Okay, so let's have a look. You see, two seconds of non-concentration, and I forget to change pens. There we go. Let's see. It says there, right, it says the structures are diploid, but they produce haploid structures. So the gametes are made by them, but they are physically diploid, or 2N. Remember this. Okay? It's quite nice. It's quite easy. At the moment, the stuff is quite easy, so you don't have to stress too much. Okay? Identify the part labeled D and state its function. Oh, D. We need to go find out where D is. Okay? Definitely find out where D is. Let me get some pink here. There's D, and they're pointing at this beautiful, if I remember the, the type of flower that I brought upon, right? It is a yellow flower. Can you remember that one? It's the yellow flower. That one that I showed you, a closed one and a big open one. Hey, Looney, can you remember that gorgeous flower and I made you choose which one you wanted? Okay. Yes. That is what we're looking at, that yellow part. Okay. So the question was, question was, identify the part number D, and if Looney can tell me what that part was, I will be in ever <laughs> debt, in other words. <laughs> Come, Looney. It's Show the me. white Where part of that flower. That's what? Yeah. Petals. That's the petals. You see? So she clever. can learn. Mm. <laughs> it's the petals. And what is the job of the petals? Let me tell you. It's to get you out of trouble one day with your wife. To give it to her <laughs> when you're in trouble. Hey, Looney? Or on Valentine's Day to give it to your girlfriend to tell you how much you love her. Hey. Ugh. No. No. Hey, Looney, you agree with me. It's not that. No. It's not about the flowers. No. The flower is colorful for one thing only. What is it? <laughs> you see how colorful? To attract the bees. That's exactly high what five. it is. <laughs> We're doing it today, Ludi. Well done, my girl. It's exactly what it is. It's for attraction, right? It attracts all the other different animals, the plant, uh, the, the, the birds, the bees, the whatever, the beetles. Right, it needs everything. So make sure to get this pollination from happening, right? To start it, it needs to be colorful and nice. Right, I'm glad you like that. Now, let's see. It is, here we go. It is the petals. They are to attract pollinators and protect the andresium and gynesium. They hold the male and female part on the middle of it, right? So it's in there. Did you notice how in the beginning, when I showed, showed you those long things, they were closed, li like this, that black flower and that, like a pinkish flower. And what I had to do is I had to force them open to make it look like this. Can you remember? Right? That there protects the male and the female part, the andresium and the gynesium. So it's for protection, right? And it's for attraction. The more beautiful it looks, the better. Right. <coughs> and if it smells nice, it's even nicer. Right. That is cool. Next one. Is this method of re reproduction, right? Is this method of re reproduction, um, represented, simple, represented in the flower? So this type of re reproduction, right? Is it suitable for a successful, right? For a successful survival on land? and explain. Does this type of re reproduction, is it good? Does it make it easier? Can it survive on the land? Well, think about it. We have flowers everywhere, okay? So if, for example, if there's flowers everywhere, do you not think that's su successful? Hey, Looney? Would it be successful if there's flowers everywhere? Yes, definitely. <laughs> so Looney's got that part right, okay? So it is successful. But why? Okay, what it does, as I said, it makes itself look beautiful. It provides nectar for the animals, so it calls the animals in in every way it possibly can, right? And it calls land animals. So if the land animals come, right, then all of a sudden it can 
pollinate. Okay, so let's have a look at the answer. It's very simple, right? It is. First of all, the question was, is this method of re reproduction? So the first answer is yes, right? The male and the female gametes are reduced in size, so they're made a little bit smaller so that they can stick to the animal, first of all. Okay? They're reduced in size. They do not rely on water. Do you know what a big thing that is? N not relying on water. Can you remember the moss in that rely on water and they can only reproduce when water comes over them? Now these flowering plants, they don't need water. Okay? They've got something else to, ta to ta send it away. Okay? They don't need water over the flower and f so that these things can swim from one to the other, the male gametes. Right? It doesn't need water. It's got something else to do it. Okay? And let's see. It has... Is it doesn't need water for transport and fertilization, first of all, and the flower is adapted to attract pollinations that are land-based. In other words, they live on land. Okay, it has bees, it has birds, it has beetles. It uses them to its advantage. Right. Okay, so that is the ne next one. Okay. And the last, last one on this, this page. There are no stomata, right? There's no stomata on the gamete, uh, the gametophyte. Why is it not dependent on this organelle? Or, or, or why is it not det uh, detrimental? Why is it not detrimental to this organism? Now, hold on. It's very simple. The gametes are found in a pollen grain, right? or in the ovary. You with me here? Does it need to get its food through photosynthesis? Is it green? It's not. Inside it's not green. It gets its food from the xylem and phloem, right? So the plant goes through photosynthesis on the leaf, right? The roots bring up all the water and the mineral salts. It makes the food, right? When this plant, when the, the male gametes and the female gametes need the food, it brings it all the way up and it gives it to you. Right? That's what it needs, first of all. So it doesn't need to photosynthesize. Okay? If it doesn't need to photosynthesize, why will it need stomata and guard cells? Why does it have to lose water or gain water? Okay? It doesn't need to. It gets everything that it needs from the rest of the plant. Okay? Where would you find stomata? It's normally on the leaf. You're not going to find the stomata in the roots, can you? Okay? It doesn't need to photosynthesize. It doesn't need to breed. It's underneath the water, uh, un un underneath the ground. Stomata on the leaf. Does the male and female gamete need stomata? No, of course not. So let's have a look. Okay? It's very simple. It is. The food for the gametophyte is transported, as I said, is transported by vascular tissue, which is, can you remember? Vascular tissue. Come on, come on. <laughs> Next okay. time. <laughs> Next time, xylem and flow. <laughs> Can you remember xylem and flow? Oh, that. That of one, of course. Come on, it shouldn't slip your mind like that, girl. Right? <laughs> she should do those questions <laughs> and she would get this. Right. Okay, but vascular tissue, right, into the gametophytes, right? There is no need for stomatas, right? On the gametophyte for transpiration, okay? They don't need to go through tra transpiration, first of all, okay? Which required for photosynthesis. That's what transpiration is used for, photosynthesis. That's why it's in the leaf. That's why it's not in the male gamete. That's why it's not in the female gamete. Right, you with me so far? Okay, so if we go on to the next one, okay? It says here, explain the term sexual <coughs> and asexual in the terms of reproduction. Looney, uh -huh. can you tell me the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction? Uh -uh. You don't think so? Uh -uh. Me, sexual reproduction, okay, is joining a male gamete with a female gamete, they come together to form a zygote, right? 
and then a new so plant from grows from it. Zygote. Okay. Okay. That male, female, so a male from one plant, a female from another plant, they come together, create a zygote, and this thing grows up into a new tree or a new plant or a new flower. That is sexual reproduction. Gametes are made, they come together, make a new plant. Asexual re reproduction means there is no gametes, no sexual contact, no male gamete, no female gamete, right? All it is, is you have one cell or one part of a plant. Oh, how can I say this? I don't know if you've ever heard of this. Have you heard of cuttings? Have you heard of cuttings? Cuttings. Cuttings. Here's one for you. Roses. You know what a rose is? Yes. Yes, of course you know what a rose is. Duh. Right. Roses use cuttings to reproduce, right? The new roses from nowadays, they've been modified and they've been changed. So what they do is they don't produce seeds anymore. And if they don't produce seeds, okay, they cannot make a new plant. So what they do to make a new plant is they take a piece of this plant and they cut it off of the tree, right? And they move it and they put it somewhere else and all of a sudden it starts growing roots. And those roots make a new plant. They're asexual reproduction. How cool is that? No male gametes, no female gametes. You take one plant, it breaks off, it makes another plant. No sex has taken place and that is called asexual reproduction. If you don't believe me, go to a nursery and ask for rose seeds. See if they'll give it to you, they'll laugh. Got to be a cutting. Right. So now that I've given you those roses and the thinking, Lenny, what do you reckon we have a break? Break time. I think so. Okay. Before we go to a break, you see now, multitasking. Bolani, Mo, Balmi, and Demo Have And then Litabo says, Luni, please pass a shout out to my friends, Ayanda, Nelisio, and Feroza. Hi, guys. And then Mukova reckons that I should take over next week's lesson and teach. Yeah, hey. <sighs> Yeah, maybe. They don't maybe, love maybe me. Maybe just, we can try. No, because I did the flower thing so well. So now they're like, no, Luni can teach. So you can do my job, I'll do your job. Are you sure? Of course. Okay, we'll do that. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll see you straight after this. Back when I said there's so many strange things happening here today, but anyway. <laughs> so someone asked, now I'm trying to find the question, but I can't find it. I'll find it later though. So someone asked what the black things are um, on the flower. So if I pull one out, this was the yellow flower, by the way, it's just petalless. So if I pull one out, one of these black things you see, okay, you can't see, but I can see, so pretend like you can see what I see. There's like this black thingy, and then I've been told that this is the female and male part standing alone together. Nice. So that's the lesson for today. Thank you. <laughs> She's brilliant. <laughs> right. <laughs> Understand it's not spores. Please find out her name. That was a good I'll question. Find, right? I'll find. I'll it's find. not spores. It's just a different color. Right? It's a bit black in the yes. beginning. Yes. Right. Just a different color. Okay. <laughs> now, let's have a look at that challenge question. I know somebody asked for the challenge question again, am I right, Lily? The challenge question is on the page. Ah, there we go. So it's on the page. So it's you should have it. on the page. Right. So let's have a look at it. Describe what happens from the moment that a ripe pollen grain lands, that's important, lands on a stigma. Right. So let's have a look at this. I want to see if I can bring this down. Okay, I found it. Did you find it? Who's it? It's Jabulila Caroline. Jabba? Jabul. Okay, probably Caroline Jabulila. Caroline. I like Caroline. Caroline. Caroline's cool. Okay, so stick with me here. Okay? Somebody asked what's the difference between a male and female part as well. Right? There we go. And that's going to be there. And one there, one there, one there, one there, one that there. That was Balmy. Sorry? That was Balmy Bal asking what is the difference between female and male. Very and nice. Okay, so a male gemi comes along, right? He comes along and he lands. Oh, that's not good. Right, let me erase that piece so you can actually see what's going on again. 
That wasn't good. I forgot that you cannot lean on this board. So a male gamete goes and lands over there. Right. What happens is that pollen grain, sorry, not male gamete, that pollen grain consists of a male gamete. And it goes through the process of mitosis, which you know is from one cell making two, right? And now these two male gametes, right? One travels, right? It goes all the way down. And as he's traveling, he comes all the way to there, right? And if I have a look at it, I'm just going to do this. He makes a tunnel, right? He makes this long tunnel. So the male gamete, I'm going to put him down here, if you look carefully. Hopefully you can see him. I've put him over there, that male gamete. The one travels. He's called it, he, he digs the hole, right? He does all the work, okay? The second male gamete, he follows, right? So they it's almost like a taxi and somebody in the taxi, right? That's what they're called, right? So the one digs this hole all the way down. It goes into the ovary over the bottom here, right? It goes inside. The first one, right, goes to these cells over here. There's two cells over here, two of them, right? Those two cells join together to form a diploid cell. Remember the haploid, huh? Those, those two cells, these, these two, Join, join together to become a diploid cell. Right. Then this next male gamete, he comes along and he joins there. Now if you have haploid, which is half the amount of chromosomes, diploid, which is double the amount of chromosomes, and I've got haploid and haploid, haploid and haploid join together to cre create diploid, right? If I add another one to that, now I've got triploid. Okay? So this becomes a triploid cell, okay? That's a very, very important cell. I'll get back to it in two seconds, right? That becomes a triploid cell. The second male gamete joins this egg cell over here to become a zygote, right? You with me there? Now, the zygote needs something to eat, am I right? Same as a baby. Think about a baby in the side. It's got a, a fallop ugh, fallopian tube. <sighs> I'm telling you, it's <laughs> for you. <laughs> umbilical cord, right? <laughs> and the mother feeds the baby. But now mommy can't feed this thing. So it needs food. And remember this, this triploid cell that was over here. It becomes the food for that little egg, should I say. Right. So when it is put into the ground and it starts growing, it needs to eat something. Remember, it's got cot cotyledons. That cotyledons give it food. And that's what that triploid cell is, is to give it food. Right. So that is fertilization. Okay. Now, I've said it in nice, simpler terms. Let's see what it says on the board. Right. Here we go. Okay. Let me get that pen going again. I'm going to take pink this time. Let's see. The pollen tube grows down into the style. Pollen tube, remember I said the first male gamete goes all the way down. Okay, into the nuclear, uh, and the nu nucleus divides by mitosis. Remember, one male gamete becomes two. Right, cool. Then, to form two male gametes, nice and easy. Then, you get, when the pollen tube reaches the ovule, right at the bottom, remember I made it go all the way down and then back up again, right? Once it reaches the ovule, it grows through the micropile. Now, the micropile is, if you get to the, to the ovary, it looks like this. Right? And there's another one that goes in like this. And this becomes there. Right? And it looks like that. And the male gamete brings its pollen tube into there, and it grows through there. It goes through there. Right? Okay, so now, it goes through the mic micropile into the new cellus. Remember, the new cellus is in here. Okay, it goes into the new cellus and the embryo sac. So nice and easy, it's the sac that's on the inside. Right, then, the tip of the pollen tube opens and the two male gametes are released into the embryo sac. They go inside. Right, now I've told you, that whole piece from the top, when it goes all the way down, goes round and goes into. Can you remember that? That's as far as we've got. Now that's using bio terms. You've got to learn how to do this. Right, then it goes to where we, where one male gamete fuses with the ovum. 
it makes the zygote, right? So it makes, it fuses with the ovum. The other male gamete fuses with the diploid endosperm, right? Remember those two cells in the middle, right? It fuses with them, and if it fuses with them, right, it's the, called the endosperm mother cell. When it fuses with them, it becomes a triploid cell. Now, how many cells were fertilized? You have the first one to make the new egg, and you had the second one to make the food. So it's called double fertilization. So there it is. Double fertilization has occurred. That is how you would answer that question. Okay, now understand that I've put that into big words. That's a nice big word. Okay, as long as you say that, okay, you can say it in easier terms, but as long as you say that, it's good. Okay, now before I go on to any other questions, Please do not forget to test yourselves. I put them on there to help you. Please do it. It's worth your while, I promise you. I go out to find nice questions, so make sure you do it. I'd love to see it. Let's see, just for me, right? Let me see how many people can do that. Let's see if you can get it right. Let's see how many people we can get right. Okay, but don't, don't, don't look in your books. I want to see your memories. So you don't, don't cheat, it's for yourself. Let's see how you can do. Right, now, Looney, I know there's questions for me. Yeah. Give me one. Tando is asking, tell me more about cross-pollination and self-pollination. Cross-pollination is from one flower to another, right? This one has the anther, this one has, well, this has got the male part, this has got the female part. The male comes from here and goes onto that flower, okay? Self-pollination is the male and female parts on the same plant. The male can fertilize the female. That means the genetic code stays, stays together. With the other one, there's genetic variation. Okay, and then Sala is asking, how does a fern reproduce if it's not in water? It's not going to. <laughs> That's <Okay>. a problem. <laughs> it's not going to. So what's going to happen is you're going to get that prothallus that is going to grab all the nu nutrients. And remember that that plant has got chloroplasts in it. It's green, so it can photosynthesize. So it'll live until there's water around it. All right, and then Tuta is asking, because flowers have both male and female parts in one, can they fertilize themselves with their own pollen? Depends on what, which one it is. Sometimes the males will, will ripen, and then all the pollen will be taken off, and once the pollen's taken off, then the female ripens, or the other way around, or if it self-pollinates, then it does that. Right. Uh, and that's all we have for today, but, but I then? know, it sucks. But I promise you, I'm sure we can get some answers there for you, hey? Huh? What Kay. do you think, Looney? Oh, it's fine, thanks. It's fine. Thanks. And I'm going to miss you, but please do that for me. Let's see how, if you can get it right. I really, really will appreciate it if you do that for me. Let's okay. see how many of you can answer those questions. I've spent a lot of time getting there. I want to test you. Otherwise, how do I know how well I've taught you? Come on, let's see if you can do it. All right, that's it from us, guys. And then Manchidi is asking me to say hi to Sizwe Mercy from Sizwe and Mercy from Sepel Moleke Hi. Then he says he's enjoying the lesson. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>